and I'm always impressed when I hear someone speak another language, whether it be English or any language other than their native language. Hi there, Steve Kaufman here again, and today I want to talk about English. Is English difficult? If it's difficult, what makes it difficult? Why do some people struggle? Uh, but remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. If you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a review. Now, I know that many of you, many of my viewers, uh, watch my videos to work on their English, which is a very good idea because I try to speak clearly. Uh, the transcript of these videos uh, are all available on link to study as lessons if you want to. So it's a good thing. And if you're interested in what I have to say, which may or may not be the case, uh, that's so much the better because if you can learn from things that are interesting, of course, that's a good thing. So I often hear people say, you know, I've been studying English for so long or my English is not good and I don't feel confident with English. I wish I spoke English better. And often the subject comes up, is English difficult compared to, I don't know, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, French, and so forth. So what's my view on all of this? Yes, there are people who struggle with English. Uh, I know people in Canada, immigrants, who have been there for 10 years, longer, and who really don't speak English very well. So does that mean that English is difficult? I don't think so. Uh, we've all, not we've all, but many of us have been watching the Olympic Games and they interview athletes from all kinds of countries and their English is simply phenomenal. And I'm always impressed when I hear someone speak another language, whether it be English or any language other than their native language. Why are the, and the same is true of athletes who, professional athletes who come to North America or perhaps the same is true of those who go to England from different countries, they end up speaking English very well. So, in fact, more people learn English and more people learn to speak English well than any other language because more people need English than any other language as an international language. So is it difficult? I think there are things that make English difficult and there are things that make English easy. But the biggest factor in terms of how successful people are at learning English is the learner, him or herself. A, the learner may make unreasonable demands on themselves. In other words, you don't have to perform, you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to sound like a native. If you learn English as an adult, you'll probably always have an accent, you'll probably always have a certain turn of phrase which reflects your native language, habits that you simply can't, you know, get rid of. And I've seen this in people who speak English extremely well and still have a German turn of phrase or a Swedish turn of phrase or a Japanese turn of phrase that they aren't going to get rid of. And so we needn't worry about that. English is a popular form of international communication. And for that reason, it's for communication. So it's not like you're taking some exalted, you know, test in Japanese or Chinese and you're working on getting the pronunciation just so and it's not like that. It's just for communicating. So once you accept that you just have to be able to communicate, and I've said many times, the most important thing is comprehension. So you have to have a good level of comprehension. If you have a good level of comprehension, the person speaking with you, especially a native speaker, feels more comfortable because they can sense if you understand and if you don't understand. So now when we talk about tests, it has been my experience that those people who learn English and focus on IELTS and TOEIC and TOEFL, they end up speaking less well. I don't think the Olympic athletes or the professional hockey players from Russia or Slovakia or Sweden who play in North America, or maybe Brazilians or Argentinians who play soccer in the UK uh, or, or Croatians or whatever, they don't take TOEFL, IELTS, I don't think so. They learn from their teammates and they're not shy about using whatever they have. And as they use it and as they hear more, they get better. So I think the extent to which people take these tests, it's almost in inverse relationship to their ability to speak the language. So it's something I would definitely advise against focusing on these tests, your results on these tests. I had a, 
In fact, the beginning of Link was when we had we had hired a person from China. It's a long story. I heard that he had his money stolen as an immigrant arriving at the airport. We said we'd help him out, give him a job. He was in IT. He had a high score in TOEFL. He couldn't communicate in English, quite simply. And it was to help him that we developed Link. But he had a high score in TOEFL. And the high scores in these tests don't mean that you speak well. And an absence of test results in these tests of English as a second language, the fact that you haven't taken these doesn't mean that you can't speak the language. There are a lot of languages that I speak well. There are some that I don't speak so well. Uh, I've never had a test of proficiency. The only one I had a test of proficiency in was Chinese because it was my job. So I took this uh, British Foreign Service exam in Mandarin Chinese. So tests, I think, are a bit of an obstacle. So that makes English a little difficult. Another thing that makes English difficult is perhaps like many languages, but English is kind of like an amalgamation of languages. So 2000 years ago, uh, the Romans were in Britain and the original inhabitants there spoke some Celtic language. And I'm not a linguist like Luke, who I had on here yes, the last week talking about uh, Latin and Greek and this is fascinating. And uh, so the Romans were there 2000 years ago, but the local inhabitants spoke a Celtic language. Uh, and surprisingly, the Latin or component of English doesn't come from the Romans, as I understand it. It comes from the Norman French who invaded in 1066. But uh, so these Celtic people were suffered the invasion of the Anglo-Saxons and that brought a major sort of Germanic element to English. And then England was subject to invasions from the uh, Scandinavians and especially the East Coast. Uh, of Britain had a significant uh, influence from Scandinavian languages. And of course, in 1066, the Normans, who actually were Vikings who had invaded France, became French speaking and then invaded Britain and brought their language with them. And the upper classes spoke French. That's why, as you may know, beef, pork and mutton and so forth, the terms of uh, for food are in French origin words, whereas those same animals, the pig and the lamb and the cow, those are Anglo-Saxon words. So the Anglo-Saxons were the peasants and the Normans, French speaking Normans were the upper class. And with all of these different linguistic influences, the uh, spelling in English is very inconsistent. And this is definitely an obstacle in English. It's a delight to go to a language like Spanish, like Russian, others, where what you see is what you get. In other words, you don't have to guess at how to pronounce words. Russian isn't as good as Spanish. Spanish is, you can just pronounce anything you see. That's far from the case. In English, we all know, you know, O-U-G-H can be pronounced any number of different ways. And, uh, you know, for me, like studying Greek, where they have some of the same issues or uh, Persian or, or Arabic, where you can't necessarily tell how a word is pronounced just by looking at it. Uh, those kinds of problems exist in English. You could argue that uh, the fact that English seems to be more idiomatic, but that's not really true. I, I think there's uh, maybe there are more tenses than some languages. I think every language has its grammatical intricacies. And, and I don't think those differences are so important. The big advantage with English is that there's so much of it around us. We don't have to go looking for content in English. We have it. We have movies. We have Netflix series. We have uh, podcasts on every imaginable subject. And given that the, the fastest way to improving in any language is to do a lot of listening and reading, to be exposed to the language and eventually to just start speaking the language without worrying, then the conditions for English are better than for any other language because there is more content. There are more English speakers around, whether native speakers or otherwise that you are going to meet wherever you go, uh, that you're going to need when you're in an airport, uh, so that the, the, the need for the language, language is greater, the availability of content, the opportunity to use it. All of these things make learning English easier. Now, this all does require a certain level of commitment from the learner. And uh, so obviously if you're a young hockey player that arrives from Russia uh, as in the case of Vancouver, we had a player called Paul Colson, Pod Colson, who arrived now speaking uh, English and now he speaks English, I think, quite well. He's thrown in with a bunch of guys. 
They might be Swedes, Finns, Americans, Canadians. He's got to speak English. And, and so therefore, thrown into that environment, he's going to end up speaking. Whereas the immigrant typically who comes to Canada or the US, they have their support group of people of the same sort of origin who speak that language. They uh, don't go out uh, for dinner with uh, the teammates every night. They sit at home and watch the immigrant does uh, TV programs from the home country. Uh, and so, you know, to break through in English, English, even though the opportunities are great, it does require commitment. And if you're living in, say, Brazil, or if you're living in uh, Japan, then you have to make a commitment to take advantage of all of the English content that is out there. And if the opportunities for speaking don't exist, you have to continue with your input activities, you know, until that opportunity arises and the opportunity will arise. Now you can also find online tutors, language partners, language exchange partners, you can travel. But even if those kinds of things aren't available to you, there is just so much content available that you can absorb, that you can listen, that you can read, you can train your brain, you can get used to it, you can feel comf confident that you understand, which is of course the key skill, so that you can prepare yourself. And then when you get in a situation, where you have to, you know, use the language, go for it. Don't worry about it. The world is full of non-native speakers of English who speak with a variety of accents, who don't speak perfectly, and their goal is simply to communicate. So I guess in conclusion, even though I hear a lot of people say English is difficult or my English is not good, I think people should stop saying that their English is not good. They should just continue hopefully finding ways to enjoy the language, spending time with the language, taking advantage of all the English language content that's available, opportunities to use English, which are available, go for it without any inhibitions and not really set standards for themselves that are unrealistic. So I hope that was helpful. I want to encourage people who are learning English, no matter what your level, don't, uh, be tough on yourselves and by the same token, you should continue to try to improve. And how do you continue to improve? Keep using the language, keep listening, keep reading. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.